So I just watched the series and I'm like totally in love with it. After episode seven, I was like, is there more? Am I getting more episodes? But yes, not yet. we are renewed. <laughs> I, I mean, I wanted them immediately, like right then. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I just have a general question first when it comes to page to screen adaptations. I think everyone kind of falls on a spectrum of, you know, either being like, I want it 100% loyal to the book or, you know, just as, you know, it can be as much of a remake as it wants to be. Where do you fall on that spectrum? I approached it like, what do I think are the most important elements of the story to keep and what do the fans care the most about? I am able to um, pull from all the like emails and letters and comments I've seen over the years from fans. So that's how I looked at this adaptation was like, what do the original fans care most about? And then also for me, like what it's gonna be most like fun and exciting to explore. Because I think, um, you know, you as a writer have to feel uh, like you're doing something new in a way too. It's not gonna be just the exact same thing, but something, what's the new approach and like how how to make this feel like fresh? I love in the story. I mean, I love Belly's story, of course, but I love the story of the moms being best friends. And I love the idea of like platonic soulmates almost. What was um, your inspiration behind go pursuing that story and, you know, developing it? I think, you know, when I first started writing the books, um, I, I thought a lot about like beaches as a kid, um, beaches, that movie came out and it was like, I was probably like really young, but kids my age who were like in elementary school like loved um, that movie. And maybe because they start out as young kids and you see them over the years. But I think there's something really lovely and powerful about um, friendship between two women. And for this, I really wanted to preserve how important that friendship is and how it's foundational to the whole story, really. Because these two women create this kind of magical place for the kids that feels really separate from their everyday lives so that they get to go and just be there and um, stop the everyday work life and I think take a moment for themselves. As a writer for the novels and also a writer of novels, uh, seeing your transition kind of going into TV writing, I'm really curious less about what you what you're what you were taking in from your novel writing, but what you took from that TV writing, what you might what lessons you might go uh, take from from that experience into writing, you know, writing more novels and especially the idea of like managing a writer's room. Like, what was that like? Well, I think that in my novel writing life, I don't outline. Um, and it's very intuitive for me. I'm sort of picture it like I am going through a forest blindfolded in a way, and I'm feeling my way through. Um, and I know where the finish point is, but it's kind of like, how am I getting there? And I also don't write in order. And um, I kind of see it when it's like 85%, 90% there, then everything comes into focus for me. I often picture like, um, Iron Man, you know, when it's like click, 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 and all the pieces are coming together. That's how I see the story. And suddenly it becomes clear to me. Now, TV writing is really different because you have to outline. Um, and you have to, you know exactly how big your canvas is, um, how many pages you need. And with a book, it's really kind of infinite. Um, and a book, you don't have budget. It's an infinite budget as well. It's just you're only limited by your imagination. So uh, what will I learn from this to take with me, I think is I will be very curious to see for my next novel if I try to outline it first. Because um, it's never worked for me in the past. So we'll see. Okay. I mean, that's amazing. I don't like, I feel like I need an outline for everything because my mind is just like jumping everywhere. So that seems like a wild process to me, but it seems so successful for well, you. It, no, it's like definitely, it's wild. And I think every time I do it, I think, ugh, I never, I like hate my process. And I never want to do it like this again, because you are going through it without knowing what you're doing. And it can be, feel very frustrating. Um, but for me, it's part of it is the exercise of like keeping myself interested and not bored, where everything can feel like serendipitous in a way. So I think you've created what I call the Asian teen girl romance extended universe because you have all of these different stories that kind of feel like they could exist in the in the same world, but they don't have to. Um, and I'm very, very much looking forward to EXO Kitty. Uh, oh, that's, thank you. I'm so excited for that in the distance. Um, and I, 
I really like that a lot of your characters are not just Asian, but they're biracial, which I think is a story that we don't hear a lot. Can you talk to me about how how it's like balancing having a story feel authentic to a character and their and their personality and who they are, but also not leaning too far into sort of what I like to call the identity story. Um, I think you talk a little bit about that in in the summer I turned pretty, but can you talk a little bit about that here? I approach it like, you know, how can I write this character authentically and um, and have it feel real and truthful um, to someone's lived experience? And I don't think anyone's lived experience is wholly uh, encapsulated by their like racial identity. I think um, oftentimes for me as a writer, I'll be asked to do like specifically um, talking about like being an Asian American writer. And I uh, love to talk about that at the same time. I also um, feel like it's not necessarily the most interesting thing about me is, is that identity. I think that everybody is made up of a lot of different things. Um, and as a storyteller, first and foremost, I'm thinking about story and um, what feels really true to that story. Definitely, for sure. I mean, I really enjoyed that scene in the series when the mom is talking about it and her and her, you know, her, her, her uh, paramour is, are discussing <laughs> that. And it was, uh, it was very, it felt I could relate to that a lot. So I appreciated that. Um, and then just as an avid reader myself, I always have, you know, a genre of book that I go to to read, you know, as a comfort for me, it's a Regency historical romance novel. Do you have a genre or a book that you like to return to as sort of like this like comfort blanket, something that you like to just enjoy, you know, when you have the time? Uh, for a comfort blanket type of book, I love like, you know, your classic uh, rom-com type of book as well. Um, I also like a Regency romance novel um, have you ever read Sherry Thomas? Yes. Isn't she so good? Oh, um, if, when she makes a return, I need her she, to come I back. asked her, I go, please, can we get another one of those? Because yes. I think everything she does is great, but I miss those, and she doesn't seem like it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so I'll just enjoy what sure, she's please. done so far. Or I'll keep asking for another one. Yes. Okay. Well, I appreciate that we are all Sherry Thomas fans. She's, she's an amazing <laughs> writer. Um, and as are you, I'm very, very excited to get more of this show. And I really want to thank, thank you. you for taking the time. Thank you so much. Thank you.